Hello everyone, it is Aussies Elect here and today I am talking about the New South Wales election. It has come, it has gone. Um, I'm a little bit late, I haven't been uploading videos for a while, sorry about that. Um, but let's just kind of go over it and where I got wrong and where I got right and we'll talk about it a little bit and what it means for the federal election um, as well. So, what this was what I guessed would happen, well not actually, this isn't what I guessed, I actually reckon that Labour would do better than this. Um, but this is what the betting site said, and I think I gave Labour something like 41 or 42 or something like that. But what ended up actually happening was more like this. Um, Students Fish and Palmer's got three, uh, Independents got three, and the Greens uh, also got three. Um, Coalition got 48, Labour got 36, I believe. Uh, yeah, basically they only picked up two seats, um, and the other seats that changed hands were the Students Fish and Palmer's. Picking up two, I said they would get two, they actually got three. Um, so, yeah, very status quo election, absolutely. Like, it was pretty flat. And we can make some kind of assumptions about the federal election based off of this, this, based off of this New South Wales election. Um, I don't think the people of New South Wales are going to be as passive as they were against Gladys Belagiglian. I think there's going to be a little bit more of a punishment. But saying that, New South Wales already kind of got the punishment, like last time, last election, the, 26 fed the 2016 federal election, um, I do believe the coalition won the two party preferred vote, but there were a lot of New South Wales seats that changed hands, I think there was about five or six, including Ida Monaro, which is known as the bellwether, it always goes to the um, party who um, uh, gets government, but it went to Labour and the coalition won, so that ended a, like a long pattern of Eden Monaro always doing that. Um, and the reason they lost was mostly because of Queensland um, and a bit of Western Australia, but the Queensland especially where there were a lot of marginal seats, there wasn't a very high swing, and it meant that like a lot of those marginals stayed marginals and they didn't go, and, and that was basically how Labour lost the election. So I don't actually think Labour's going to do too well in New South Wales this time. I think they might they might pick up maybe like three seats or something like that. I don't know if they're going to win Reid. I don't know if they're going to win Robertson. But generally the swing is not going to be high. Um, the polls have been kind of mixed. I think some polls have said that Labour's are going to do pretty well. Some polls have said the opposite. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that great. And uh, you can see by this New South Wales election, I don't think it'll be too different. I think, I think there's a chance that people might be saving their baseball bats for Scott Morrison and the Liberal Party in um, federal politics. I think there's, that's a chance, but I think there's also a chance that, you know, it, Labor's not going to really focus too much on New South Wales to win. They'll be focusing more on Queensland and Victoria, where um, it looks like there's going to be a bigger swing there. Um, so let's have a look at the upper house. This was really interesting. This took a couple of weeks of counting. Um, it looked like what my prediction here could have been the case. This is my final prediction. This was the last prediction I made um, on the day before the election. Um, for a while it looked like this was very possible, where we had two Green, a Keeps in the Hour, a Liberal Democrat, Shooters Vicious, and a One Nation. And then we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight Coalition and seven Labour. Um, but what ended up happening was something a little different. So One Nation got an extra seat. Lib Dems uh, had a bit of an upset. They didn't get that seat and went for the Shooters Vicious. And this seat ended up going to Animal Justice. Uh, just like last time, I really didn't expect Animal Justice to do that well, but yeah. Um, Animal Justice pretty much did the exact same thing as last time, which is where they just got like about 1.7% or something like that. And they just leapfrogged a whole lot of other parties based on like little minor party preferences, uh, little left-wing minor party preferences. So, um, Keeps in the Open was looking to doing pretty well for most of the count. Um, Kevin Bonham was kind of... Uh, uh, keeping us updated with all of that, but yeah, they're, they're looking pretty good. I, know, I really thought they were going to get a seat there, but um, unfortunately they ended up going lower than Animal Justice, and then the, their preferences gave Animal Justice the seat. We had the Shooters Fishers, uh, they, they're looking like they could have got two seats, but they ended up not, and then we have One Nation that managed to get two. Um, this is actually kind of funny, because in my very first prediction video, which was horribly wrong, because it gave Labour eight seats, um, I suggested the One Nation could win two seats, and you know, they, if they get something like they'll, you know, and I thought they'll get something like nine or ten percent. Um, they didn't get nine or ten percent, but they still won two seats. They only got something like six point five percent, but it was basically preferences that um, allowed them to win those two seats. So, um, but really, also a very status quo result. The only thing that changed was last election, coalition got an extra seat here, and then the CDP got a seat here instead of mm, CDP. Come on got a seat here instead of One Nation. So that, that was, 
So it was almost the exact same result, which I find pretty funny. But yeah, let's, let's talk about where I got wrong. So, um, Liberal Democrats. So I really thought they would get a seat, and it once again looked like they would for a long time. Um, eventually, just they dropped down. Um, they, didn't, they didn't have many preferences. I think that was the biggest issue. Their primary vote ended up being even lower than the CDP, and I thought, you know, maybe the CDP would pull it off, but they did not. Um, and that also ends a long string of CDP winning a seat. They failed to do that. Um, that's what I expected. I did say that, but um, but they might have even had more of a chance than the LDP in the end. But it was just one nation with their fucking preferences eating up all those right-wing minor parties, and also the Liberal Democrats were after the Liberals on the ballot paper, and that's probably what killed them. You know, they were a bit too far to the right. They, they might have got another like 0.5% or something, and that would have saved them. So, um, very sad to see you go, David Lionhelm. Uh, I wish you well. Uh, apparently, he had a bit of a spat after uh, he lost the election, but, um, you know, I can't really blame him. I think more than anyone, David Lionhelm really wanted to win that seat. He would have felt... He was, he was so sure he'd done it, and I was sure that he'd done it too, but uh, unfortunately, no. Um, so, Labour Party was my, probably my worst, my biggest faux pas. Um, I was right about the coalition, they did end up getting something like an 8% swing against them, and uh, they only just managed to pick up 8, but that's kind of what I expected. But the Labour Party, I think it got actually a swing against them, I think it got a swing of like 1 or 2% a swing against them, and I did not expect that to happen, that was, that is bizarre that that happened, because like, I guess One Nation, any up Labour votes, you know, Mark Latham used to be a Labour Party guy, but I thought that, you know, they would stay pretty constant given that like, I didn't, like, I didn't think the Labour was going to pick up that much, but at least they would stay the same as last time, you know? Like, they didn't do that badly in the campaign, did they? Like, they were leading in the polls and two-party preferred, like, a week before the election. But, yeah, they they only just managed to get seven seats. They got it through preferences. They did not do very well at all. I think they got, like, under 30%, which is really awful um, for the Labour Party, and I really didn't expect it to be that bad. But it is pretty hilarious looking back at me suggesting that they were going to get eight seats, but... They were looking a lot more competitive earlier in the campaign, so I guess it's not too surprising. But yeah, let's have a look at uh, what this means for the coalition. Um, I think I think they're in pretty good hands at the moment. So that they need 22 to pass legislation, 17 plus um, CDP, that's 18 plus One Nation, that's 20. Students for the Development is 22, so they can do it without the need for the Animal Justice Party. Apparently, Animal Justice Party isn't that left wing. I think it has maybe some sort of centre to centre right economic stances. Um, so, you know, uh, this will just be fine for them, um, and, you know, if they, if the left want to block legislation, they'll need to get one of the right of center minor parties to come with, the, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the, the CDP or something like that, but, um, uh, yeah, if the, if the Labour Party just so happened to win in the lower house, I mean, it could have worked, I think they had, like, some kind of preference deal with the Shooters Fishes, but, like, even they, you know, yeah, well, maybe, maybe, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, once again, it's very balanced, it's, we've got four, five, six, seven, um, eleven, which is almost the record, I believe, six, seven, yeah, yeah, almost the record, I think it was, like, twelve or thirteen or something like that, uh, so, yeah, a lot of minor parties, um, uh, good luck, I think, I think the biggest winner was definitely, uh, Mark Latham with One Nation, especially, he didn't look like he was gonna get two, and, uh, that ended up happening, and the biggest losers, uh, David Lionhelm, keeps in the open, and the CDP, rest in peace. Anyway, this was an interesting election, we did a live stream of it, um, and, uh, you know, it was a bit of fun, but it was also a really boring and disappointing election, I have to say, but I don't live in New South Wales anymore, so who really cares? I will be uploading a very old video I did about the Victorian election last year, which I did ages ago, but just haven't uploaded, um, but yeah, that'll be up tomorrow or something like that, and then I'll do a video talking about the federal election, which is coming up federal election is in like less than a month's time now so yeah sorry that i haven't done a video on it recently but um uh even if i did a video like a month ago i don't think things have changed really that much so yeah it's i mean we kind of need another news poll i think you know i don't think there's one this weekend so maybe next weekend it'll be more kind of insight onto that but uh yeah if i do it before then then you know um i've also placed a whole lot of fuck i just i did this tonight i placed a whole lot of bets on the federal election so i'll talk about that next time anyway so this was my uh, I did I, I did a bad prediction. This was my original predictions. Um, they were wrong. Um, I expected Labour to do a bit better. Expected the coalition to do a little bit worse. But yeah, coalition really um they pulled a good they pulled a good one off here. Well, congratulations guys. And I am finished with talking about this until the next election in 2023. Goodbye everyone.
Oh yeah, might as well also mention that I had a very bad prediction where I assumed that Jerry Buckingham had a chance of getting a seat. He absolutely didn't, and who I put first, uh, Group S, absolutely uh, failed too. So, sorry guys, you were great candidates, but uh, unfortunately people don't vote for groups, they vote for parties. Better luck next time.